Hey there guys, it's the final day of Dark Visions number 23 on Global, and I decided to go back to the final boss to improve my score. I've made some changes to the team that I did, or more specifically some gear and some action adjustments, um, and I got a 29 billion score, which has put me currently at rank 208. After the cheaters are removed, that'll be top 100, potentially top 50. But uh, let's go ahead and show you the changes that I made to the team. We're going to run the fight, then I'll show you the gear and all. And if I don't do a higher variance than 29 billion, I'll show you the screenshot of the 29 billion run. But let's give it a go. So it's the exact same team, it's just um, some updates. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is on turn one, Olive is going to use her LB as the very first action. That's going to start unlocking her Magnus. Then we're going to start Wilk in the base form and then shift him. He's wearing Titus STMR in the base form. Um, and then we're going to use Rock Quake style in the shift form on turn one. Then we're going to use Chizuru's base form LB after those two. That's going to um, give the party a bigger AoE Beast Killer buff. It's a 160 buff instead of a 150 AoE. It also mirages the party. Now we need to refill the LB of all three of the back row units. So we're going to use Titus. Now make sure your Titus starts in the shift form. I saw some comments on the old video. People were starting Titus in the base form, shifting him on turn one to the shift form. And that puts him on cooldown. You got to start him already shifted. So we're going to have Titus rally and cry to fill LB gauge. And then we're going to use Golbez to triple Cagnazzo's power. And we're going to have Nicole do Enhancing Stance. Now you need a full Esper Gauge for this, so make sure you're wearing some Esper Fill gear. And then Double Flood. Now the reason for Cagnazzo and Flood is just to hit the boss and get get some uh, some LB Crystal Drops, hopefully to go onto Olive and Wilk. Okay, so they have some auto some auto fill uh, going as well. Now we're going to shift Wilk to the base form, because his base form is wearing a 1000% fill rate. We're not going to do anything in the base form. Chizuru is now going to staunch, eastern, and strong. That's going to put up a fill rate buff and some flat fill for the party. Now we need to get the rest of Olive and Wilk's LB filled. This is kind of RNG. We need to get hopes from Crystal Drops. We're going to just reload Golbez and triple Cagnazzo, but Titus is going to change. Titus is going to do You're Going Down for the Modifier Boost and Double Drain Tackle. So we're going to use these two, hit the boss a few more times, and hopefully we need to get one or two crystals on Olive and Wilk. And we did. There we go. So Wilk was wearing a 1000% fill rate, Olive was wearing some auto fill. Now, we're going to use Olive's LB a second time. That unlocks her Magnus. We're going to put Wilk back in the shift form and use his shifted LB to stack it up. Don't use these together. Wait for Olive to finish. You don't want any chaining because the boss is very squishy. So don't chain these skills. Wait till each unit is done. Then we're going to use Nicole, his shifted LB, as the last action. Okay, some more attacks on Nicole. We don't really care. Okay, now we're going to send Titus back to the base form, or to the base form, I should say. And we're going to use his base form LB. That's going to put up the Sword in Peril, so it's already active for the kill turn. Now, as you can see, the boss is very squishy. You don't want to chain on the boss. Um, Wilk is now going to do Vengeance to do a 90% break. Wait for this to finish. And now we're going to use Chizuru to do a Beast Pulverizer for a bigger Beast Killer for herself. It's a 250 self only. We're going to use Olive to do Mammals for a 200 self only Beast Killer buff. We're going to use Nicole to triple. We're going to imbue the party with true water. We're going to use elemental power water on Golbez for the 100 amplify on the kill turn. And we're going to flood again. And Golbez is going to magic boost. Now this turn is going to be an AoE physical attack, but we've got Mirage from Chizuru's base form LB on turn one. That's fine. Now here's where some pain in the butt RNG comes in. Um, when the boss does an AoE attack, there's a 40% chance that Golbez counters with Barrier Shift. So let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and do this and watch the turn. Let's see if Golbez counters with Barrier Shift. So here's the AoE, no damage, and then... 
Golbez did not counter. That is good. It's a 40% chance you can't you can't do anything about it. It's his natural chance to counter with barrier shift. The the reason that's important, barrier shift will consume your focus. So the focus, the, the magic boost we did on turn three, if Golbez had countered with magic barrier or barrier shift, you would lose your stack of focus. Now that being said, don't retreat or give up. It just means Golbez will deal less damage. But if you're going for a maximum possible damage score, you would kind of have to start the fight over and do it again and just, you know, pray that Golbez doesn't counter. It's a 40% chance that he does, a 60% chance that he won't. In this clear, he didn't. Great. Let's keep going. So now Titus is going to delay Buster. This is my story. That's a, another modifier boost. And Ace's ability for a bigger water amplify. We're going to get a second stack of magic boost. Or if you countered barrier shift, it'll reset. So back to your first stack. But thankfully, this is our second stack. Um, Chizuru. Now this is an, an, another change we're making. Instead of using Tyvis' spirit, on turn four, we're not gonna Tyvis spirit Chizuru. We're gonna instead use the 400% attack and magic buff for the party. This should be a tiny amount more damage for the whole party, as opposed to some more personal Tyvis' spirit damage. And then focused body. Olive is gonna just do her Magnus. Wilk is gonna go to the base form. We're gonna do his base form Magnus and then just do Steady Crag twice to refill his LB gauge. And Nicole can summon the Leviathan Field. Now thankfully this turn has no AoEs, so um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have to worry about Colbez countering. Okay, now it is time to burst and we'll just you know do the damage. So Wilk back to the shift form where we're going to rage of the his LB basically. Uh, Shizuru is gonna shift and use her LB. We're going to use Olive's LB. We're going to use Titus's LB. We're going to Meteor it with Golbez. And then we're going to use Nicole to um, Blue Wave. Okay, so like like this this is the same chaining as the first video. I realize it's a massive headache. It sometimes breaks, etc., etc. Um, but we're going to be sending Wilk and Olive first. Then we're going to be sending Titus. Then um, we're going to wait a moment. Then we're going to send, you know, Golbez as well. And then Nicole matches Titus later on. And then Chizuru comes in at the end and extends the chain. If you did it perfectly, you'll be a 146 count chain score. It's a horrible chain. This is not fun. Practice on the training dummy. Get it worked out. But let's give it a go and hopefully it won't break here. Looking good. Okay. And there, oh, it... It broke. Okay, I'm going to reset the app and try it again because it's, <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun. I, this, is, this, is, this is all Titus' fault. This is completely Titus' fault. I hate Titus. Um, but yes, I'm going to reset the app and we'll try that chaining again and we'll see, we'll see what kind of damage we did. Be right back. Alright guys, we're going to try this again because this is so fun and exciting. We love chaining in Brave Exvius. Alright, it looks good here. It looks good here. All right, there we go, there we go. So what kind of score did we get for this run? Um, let's find out. 26.2, okay, yep, that's variance. So if you wanna try hard, um, you know, variance is a thing, there it is. I'll show you a screenshot of what the score I got earlier was. Um, so there it is, you know, worse than earlier. Uh, here's the breakdown, and this one it looks like just, no one rolled horribly, just like, you know, mid-tier rolls across the board but let's go ahead and show you um let me bring up a screenshot and i will show you right here here's the screenshot of my 29 billion you know it took me a few rolls to get there but there is the 29 billion roll that i got with the same exact team same exact rotation um same gear and there is the damage breakdown in the middle so we're gonna look we're, we're gonna compare the good score so titus rolled you know pretty high variance um, based on my calculations on that roll that I did, my Golbez rolled almost perfect. He is like within within five percent of a perfect roll. So Golbez rolling so well is a big reason that score was so high. Wilk rolled above average. Olive actually rolled low on that clear. That clear could have been as high as thirty one billion um, if Olive and uh, Titus had rolled their maximums. 
Uh, Olive's maximum is 5.1. She actually rolled low on that clear, but that, that's kind of the way it goes. You know, you can calculate your maximum. You're almost never going to hit it because someone's always going to roll low um, or just not maximum. You know, rolling maximum score on five different damage dealers is a pipe dream. It's never going to happen. Anyway, and then Shizuru in that clear rolled uh, slightly above average. So yeah, that was an overall really good, really good, really good clear. Um, anyway, I will show you the uh, team's gear and all that. So it's mostly the same as the, the previous run. Um, the difference is Nicole, actually no, dif no difference from Nicole. So he is passive provoke evasion with 100 wind resist. Um, and then blue wave and status immunity. Some esper fill as well. Uh, I'm not sure why. Oh, that's for, for resistance. Um, and then shift form, same thing. And yeah, that's all That's all it is. He does all the stuff. He needs to be crowned. He needs to be EX2. Um, now, the, the big change, the, one of the big changes is, like I said, I got an off-banner Titus um, in the last two weeks. And because of that, as well as the whole shard humbug they had uh, a few weeks ago with the VIP coins resetting, um, Titus is now EX3 for me, which also gave me a second copy of his STMR, and that was a big damage boost for me as well. Anyway, start him in the shift form, uh, give him, make sure he's wearing his own STMR. Other than that, um, Rally and Cry, if you have it, Lion Emblem, that makes filling the LB gauge easier. The rest of the gear doesn't matter in the shift form. Base form is LB damage versus Beast. Here's the setup, um, you know, just gear him the best you possibly can. Uh, Etc. And then 10,300 attack power, uh, maxed LB, <laughs> way over cap LB, but yeah, maxed LB and maxed Beast Killer, and he does the second highest damage on this specific clear. Um, his damage on, on, with my personal gear and this, this this specific team, uh, his maximum damage would be 5.6. Um, Golbez, no change from last time. He's just all in for uh, magic, meteor, etc. He's only level 120. Um, if you want to go like super hardcore, you could 130 him. I'm not because I don't really care that much about Dark Visions, but there it is. Uh, magic boost is kind of a big deal. Uh, maxed damage versus beast, 9200 magic, 6300 MP, and maxed beast killer. Now, I've seen some comments as well asking about Golbez's uh, killers. Um, yes, Golbez is, a ma I mean, Meteor is a magic spell. But it's a physical typed magic spell, meaning Meteor uses physical killers. Keep that in mind. So physical killers for your Meteor, and that's the reason you can imbue Meteor is because it's a physical. It's a physical. It, it's very strange. It's a magic spell, but it's a physical attack, and it uses physical killers. So make sure you're using physical killers for your Meteor users. Wilk. With my second copy of Titus's STMR, that boosted his damage a huge amount, and that was a big, big deal for me. That's why I've been saying Titus's STMR is such a big deal for specific units, and Wilk, it really matters. Now, in his base form, we start in the base form, and we're just using um, a lot of uh, LB fill. So, a thousand percent fill rate, and then he's using uh, his STMR weapon. Shift form. You can use axe, or you can use, uh, or you can use claw or fist. I went with axe because axe has a higher maximum variance and a lower minimum variance. So you can have those big swings. And because I was going for like a high possible score, I went with axe. That gives me a wider range. When you're really chasing a high roll, you want axe. When you want consistency you go with the fist, because the fist has a smaller range. You don't have those really bad lows or the really great highs. You're like just always like mid midpoint. The axe can have horrible rolls or amazing rolls, and we got a pretty high roll on that clear with Wilk. My good clear. Anyway, shift form is using... Um, you don't need to wear Titus STMR on the shift form. His own STMR for the flat stats is, you know, better. Uh, there it is. So here's his gear. Now he is also wearing chain speed, keep that in mind. So a prodigious performer and promise from childhood. It's a very minor thing, but because him and Olive are going first in a chain, I wanted both of them at very high chain speed. So the chain maxes out like almost instantly. And he's maxed on everything. Max beast, maxed LB. Olive, um, same thing, LB damage versus beast. Uh, here we go, and there it is. And again, max chain speed. We've got Prodigious Performer and Promise from Childhood. That way her chain cap maxes out in like two hits. 
Uh, there we go. Uh, dark range card, and she's maxed on everything. Maxed LB, max Bs. Now, this is also important. I gave her Kyrie's STMR. You don't need Kyrie's. Kyrie's is just the best. If you don't have Kyrie's STMR, give her dag high class dagger. Um, the alternative is high class dagger from Riku, but you want a lot of LB per turn to, 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 to lower RNG. So this one is six LB per turn. If you do have Kyrie's STMR, it's seven LB per turn. It makes it easier to fill her up on the second turn. Um, that way she can LB back to back. It lowers your RNG. You could also technically go with like fill rate, like a mood maker, but that, in my opinion, is more RNG, and I don't like that, so just an LB fill rate. And again, if you don't have the limited version, uh, high class dagger is totally fine as well. It's just slightly, slightly worse. Chizuru in the base form is using Lion Emblem, and give her some LB fill. Uh, we actually didn't use Tyve as a spear. We took that off, and we're going with her, her buffs instead. So give her some LB fill so she fills up nice and easy. Um, we actually never used we actually never used this either on her, so you can take that off as well. There we go. Um, so just some LB fill. And then shift form is just, you know, damage. Um, she's going last in the chain, so she doesn't need chain speed. So you can give her, like, Esper stats. You know, Dream of the Faith for the King. I gave her chain speed anyway because whatever. Oh, and the cool smile card is obviously a very big deal for Chizuru. And she's maxed on everything. Max Beast, maxed LB. Okay. I'll have a turn chart in the comments. Um... And then tomorrow, we are going to have, you know, Nier, we're going to have Clash of Wills, and I will have either a live stream tomorrow or just a guide video later in the day. Because for me, tomorrow is a holiday, and depending on maintenance timing, I may not have time right away. But I will definitely have Clash of Wills stuff for you guys at some point, either tomorrow or worst case scenario Friday, but probably tomorrow um, at some point. Anyway, hope it helps. See you next time.